Hello there you guys, welcome to another one of my live videos and um, sorry um, I currently uh, wasn't um, on the channel yesterday you know, for, to uh, give you uh, my match reaction um, on the Everton uh, Manchester United game because currently uh, my internet um, has been playing up uh, guys so um, I do uh, really really um, apologise uh, for that um, as well. So today um, on this video I'm going to currently give you now uh, my match reaction on my reflection um, on the game uh, of Manchester United uh, versus um, Everton uh, yesterday. Uh, Everton won by four goals to nil um, against Manchester United uh, yesterday um, at Goodison Park. Uh, an absolutely uh, um, abysmal, abysmal uh, performance uh, from Manchester United. I think that's our heaviest defeat um, in the league, you know, uh, for like uh, three years, um, something um, like that. And now we have lost six games. Um, we have lost six out of our last um, eight games um, as well. So we are um, in a bad vein of form, you know, to be quite honest with you. But fair play, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, did um, apologise, you know, to be um, quite honest with you, you know, based on that um, disgraceful performance uh, from Manchester United, of course. I do think potentially now probably top four um, is over, you know, despite uh, Arsenal losing to uh, Crystal Palace uh, yesterday uh, by three goals to two. But obviously, we do know that Champions League football Ball, um, is very, very um, essential uh, for next season, of course. You know, so we can uh, attract uh, players uh, to the highest uh, level um, as well. But for me, you can see the deficiencies um, in the squad. Obviously, you know, we do need to rebuild this summer. Obviously, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to need uh, backing uh, this summer um, as well. But we've got to be ruthless in this summer transfer window. You know, we are expected, you know, uh, to orchestrate um, a bigger summer uh, clear out um, as well. But I think the majority of these players, you know, shouldn't be um, at Manchester United next season. But I think the most central thing is, you know, in the summer, you know, we've got to get the right players, you know, that have got the ability to elevate Manchester United at least um, in the next two to three years but I do think we're at least three or four years off you know from being that competitive elite level football club you know as we was um, under um, Alex Ferguson um, as well but I don't know what's gone wrong it's just seems to have all gone wrong you know since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has got the Manchester United job um, on a full-time basis because reflecting you know when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was the interim manager in his first uh, three months um, at the club you know the performances were good you know the results were really really good um, as well and he was getting the best um, out of these uh, group um, of players and Solskjaer exceeded um, expectations but for me I think you'll get some Manchester United fans you know now uh, currently uh, basically uh, saying that maybe we have given the job too soon maybe we should have waited till uh, the summer you know to give him uh, the contract term as well but potentially yesterday um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, had currently uh, made uh, three changes um, as well but it was an absolutely diabolical performance uh, from Manchester United you know not one player you know step, 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 stepped up uh, to the play um, yesterday it was a very very bad performance you know you know wasn't playing for the club you know wasn't uh, playing uh, for the shirt um, at all no fight no passion you know no energy uh, whatsoever too tepid you know for me you know we didn't create enough chances I don't even think we we even had uh, even had um, a shot um, on target um, in the game um, as well. And for me, you know, you know, majority of the blame now um, is on the players. You know, still some of the blame, you know, does still stem uh, from Oligan and Solskjaer because some of his uh, tactics uh, are questionable. You know, to be um, quite honest with him as well. But the squad from back to front, you know, potentially um, isn't good enough. You know, to be quite honest with him, I think you know we're showing no fight, we're showing no passion um, or anything um, like that um, as well. We showed no attacking ambition, you know, whatsoever uh, yesterday. And Everton, you know, deserved uh, the victory. You know, yesterday to be quite honest with him, but I think Lukaku was poor yesterday for Manchester. United. United. I thought Rashford was poor. I thought Martial was poor. I also thought Pogba was poor. I thought Matic was very, very um, ineffective in that midfield. I thought Smalling was poor. I thought Jones was poor. De Gea again, you know, making um, another uh, mistake um, as well. So you can potentially see uh, the deficiencies um, in the squad. But congratulations to Everton. You know, they you know, they deserved uh, the victory, you know, to be um, quite honest with you as well. And we do know, you know, Everton have been in a good run of form, you know, most recently, you know, especially um, at home. You know, they've beaten us comfortably. They've beaten Chelsea there. They've also beaten Arsenal there. You know, the duo with Liverpool there. Uh, there um, as well and Everton you know were the far better team from minute 1 to 90 uh, yesterday um, as well you know they were very very good you know I thought Bernard was superb on that left hand side for them I thought Lucas Dine was superb um, on that left hand side for Everton I thought Sigerson had a good game for Everton you know he got a goal and got an assist I thought Richardson played very very well um, for Everton um, as well Adrissi Gay played really really well for Everton and you know they deserve the victory and I think this is like uh, our first defeat you know to Everton um, in like four years um, or something um, like that um, as well but yeah uh, the goals basically you know uh, first goal was from Richardson, uh, Everton's first goal, you know, did come uh, from a set piece. Um, you know, it was a good acro acrobatic, you know, volley to be quite honest with you, and that was 1 0 to Everton. And then Everton went 2 0 up, you know, just before the half an hour mark, you know, through Sigurdsson. I think Matic is to blame uh, for that um, as well, you know, backing off uh, Sigurdsson to be quite honest with you. De Gea po po probably, you know, should have saved that, you know, to be quite honest with you. But I think it was a shot from like 30 yards out or something like that, but that uh, was uh, 2 0. Then it was 2 0 um, at half time, um, of course, and then Manchester United bought some substitutions on, but Tommy Way came on, Young came on um, as well. I don't think Tommy Way, you know, did much, you know, when he uh, came on um, as well. For me, I think Matic should have been dropped. In for my own preference, I think probably, you know, but Tommy Way, you know, should have died, to be quite honest with you. The third goal uh, was from Lucas Dine. Um, it was a superb striker uh, from him. And the fourth goal uh, was from uh, Theo uh, Walcott um, as well. And it's just, I don't know what's going on, you know, with Manchester United at the moment. I still believe that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, can take this club forward, you know, to be quite honest with you. I'm still backing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I still think um, he's the right man for Manchester United. But since he has been appointed, you know, the club's full-time manager, you know, we're starting to 
to see element uh, we're starting to see uh, element of the performances you know that we did see under Jose Mourinho and, you know don't forget guys you know to be quite honest with you, I still think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is the perfect fit fit for this squad you know to be quite honest with you but I still believe he can take Manchester United forward but for me none of this team is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's of course and he's still in the process of rebuilding this Manchester United team of course we didn't spend out in January you know we didn't get as a priority uh, targets uh, last summer um, as well so he's still in the process of rebuilding this Manchester United team don't forget he's inheriting 11 of Jose Mourinho's players you know there's still some players here uh, from Louis van Gaal um, as well so I don't know what's going on to be quite honest with you but we are expected to orchestrate a big summer clear out I think at least um, up, maybe up to six, seven, eight players you know could leave this summer. I think from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's preference, you know, he wants to bring at least five new additions uh, to the club this summer. Obviously, we do know that Solskjaer needs back in this summer and it's good that he's emphasising his targets. Obviously, we do know that the club are looking to hire a director of football and, you know, to change uh, the club's structure um, and all that um, as well. But obviously, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, wants to build the squad, you know, worthy um, of the club's um, history um, as well. But potentially, we do know a lot of money has been spent at Manchester United and as I did say, since Alex Ferguson um, has retired, you know, about £700 million um, has been spent. I think the majority of that money, you know, we have spent, you know, has probably got, gone on a you know majority um, of that money we spent has probably you know gone on the wrong players you know to be um, quite honest with you um, as well but um, for me you know and we've had different managers with different philosophies for me I just don't know what's going on you know to be um, quite honest with you um, as well but yeah <clears throat> But as I did say, for me, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is definitely you nowhere know, still uh, the right man uh, for Manchester United um, as well. So um, as I did currently say, you know, you've, you know, the players are to blame um, as well. You know, without a shadow of a doubt, you can blame Solskjaer. You can also blame the players as well. But you've got to question the mentality of these players. You know, they have to take, so they've got to take responsibility of uh, these players um, as well because they're not playing like they did. You know, whilst Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I know, was um, interim manager, um, of course, um, as well. So you've got to question the mentality of the players. A squad from back to front is potentially not good enough, and I think the majority of these players, you know should not be um, at Manchester United uh, next season um, as well. Uh, and potentially for me I think the players that do need to go as I've been uh, giving you um, an update on I think Lukaku definitely needs to leave uh, Manchester United um, in the summer uh, for me Lukaku is not good enough to represent Manchester United even though he has got a good pedigree in the Premier League there were reports coming out the other day saying that reportedly his agent has revealed um, that he's up, his future um, is very very open um, he's Romelu Lukaku's uh, potentially I think his agent said as well that a move to Italy and Spain you know, would appeal you know, for Romelu Lukaku and I think if Lukaku is to leave this summer his preferred destination um, is Juventus um, of course um, obviously he scored 27 goals in his first season in all competitions with Manchester United but for me he's not reliable enough he's too slow I've got strong reservations um, about uh, Romelu Lukaku um, as well Manchester United will look to recoup the initial £75 million pounds, you know we did pay for him from Everton um, a couple of years ago as well he's still got three years left on his contract at Old Trafford um, I think we paid £75 million plus £15 uh, million, um, in bonuses um, as well and I think he's on about £250,000 a week uh, recent reports have said that the likes of Inter Milan Paris Saint-Germain and Bayern Munich have been um, in interested um, in Romelu uh, Lukaku um, as well but there has been reports saying that Manchester United you know, could possibly you know, sanction him off this summer but as I did say we'll look to try and recruit uh, that initial uh, £75 uh, million uh, pounds, um, as well but his goal scoring form is very very good for me his finishing lets him down he's too slow he doesn't get enough of them uh, runs in behind so I think he needs to uh, leave uh, Manchester United um, as well and um, I've got concerns um, about the like, you know, in relation to Marcus Rashford and Anthony Martial um, at the moment because for me, Rashford and Martial and all that, you know, they are the short term problem um, at Manchester United. I still think, you know, they are the, you know, they are the long term solution because Rashford is still in the process um, of developing. Um, as you all know, he's only 21 years of age. James um, Marcus Rashford, but he was absolutely diabolical yesterday. You know, it was Marcus Rashford, and I think his performances in the last couple of months, you know, have been way below par. You know, to be quite honest, and I know he's risen up the Manchester United youth system. He's been a United player you now uh, since um, the age. Um, of seven as well and he's been in the senior squad of us since 2016 um, as Marcus uh, Rashford um, as well but for me you know Rashford for me is still in the process of developing I still think he's a couple of years off you know from graduating uh, to that uh, level um, as well so I've been very very disappointed you know uh, with Marcus Rashford and, and we know his first choice head of Lukaku you know Martial's been uh, very very um, disappointing um, indeed um, as well you know he hasn't been you know playing in the right vein or manner you know since he uh, recovered uh, from his um, injury um, as well Anthony Martial and you know he's only still very very young he's got immense talent um, of course, um, as Martial, you know, Manchester United, of course, this season, you know, this season, you know, give him um, a new five year deal. But most recently, you know, he's been very inconsistent and he's failed to replicate, you know, what he did um, earlier on in the season because Martial, you know, was in really, really good form um, earlier on um, in the season um, as well. You know, when Jesse Lingard has played, I know he didn't play yesterday, but when Jesse Lingard has played, you know, in the last couple of months, you know, um, he's been very, very um, inconsistent um, indeed. And he's, what, 27 years of age now, Jesse Lingard. And we do know what he can be capable of um, on that right hand side, you know, Jesse Lingard. But at 
at least for a couple of months now. You know, he's been very, very inconsistent. Um, indeed, but as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, was saying, you know, you know, prior to the Everton game, you know, he was talking about saying that some players, you know, do need a reality check, you know, based um, on their uh, poor uh, run um, of performances um, as well. Matic for me I don't think he's good enough for Manchester United um, as well you know obviously he played uh, yesterday um, in the Everton game as I did say he was the fault uh, for the second goal for me we need the centre defensive midfield of course uh, that's fast and tenacious because for me Matic is not reliable enough you know I've got strong reservations about him he's too slow um, as well so for me I don't think he's good enough you know to represent Manchester United you know to be quite honest some games you know he has performed Mat Nemanja Matic but you know that I've got uh, strong uh, reservations um, about him um, as well I wouldn't have started him um, in that uh, game uh, yesterday uh, Pogba for me you know he's performed Performances at least now in the last four or five games um, have been a uh, very very um, poor um, indeed. You know Paul Pogba's potentially you know he's supposed to be one of the best midfielders um, in world football and most recently you know he's really you know failed uh, to replicate that. You know to be quite honest. And overall since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has come in, you know Paul Pogba has been one of our uh, most um, influential players um, as we all know um, as well. But um, Pogba you know in the last four or five games has been very very poor. His performances um, have been uh, way below par. You know to be quite honest. When we do basically you know there's been a lot of talks you know about Paul Pogba going around Madrid. I think. Talks were saying that Man United are willing to offer in the captain's armband on a permanent basis, you know, to uh, convince him to stay at Manchester United. Paul Pogba still got over two years left um, on his deal um, at the club. Uh, there's an option um, of a third year um, as well, so that takes him under contract till 2022. But there has been a lot of rumours, you know, linking him with a move to Real Madrid. And Zinedine Zidane's a big admirer of the player. You know, there was reports coming out uh, the other week, as we all know. Basically, you know, reports were coming out uh, the other week saying that basically, you know, Paul Pogba was talking a lot um, about Real Madrid. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has basically, you know, spoken uh, to Paul. Paul Pogba, as we all know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer insists he's focused on United and insist, he insists that he will not leave Manchester United and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is convinced that Paul Pogba will still be at Manchester United next season. But reports came out a couple of weeks back saying, as I did say, Man United was set to begin contract negotiations. Reportedly, he was demanding an astro astronomical salary of around £500,000 a week you know, to sign a new contract with Manchester United. Because I did say, of what currently Alexis Sanchez um, is currently owning, it's taking its toll, it's... Uh, it's got a bad um, effect term um, on our. It's having. It's uh. It's totally um have, having a bad effect term um, on our wage structure um, as well. Because as I did say, you know, we've got quite a few players, you know, demanding uh, quite um a bit more money now. But Paul Pogba for me, he's got a really, really uh, step up uh, to the plate um as well. Um, I also think you know potentially you know Smalling and Jones you know should leave Manchester United this summer because potentially they're not good enough you know to represent Manchester United again. Very, very poor there uh, yesterday. Smalling and Jones and for me, they get ex you know they, they get exposed you know far too easily. You know the Chris Smalling um. They get exposed far too easily, you know, the Chris Smalling um, and Phil Jones, you know, to be um, quite honest with you um, as well. You know, they have been two long-serving long uh, players um, at the club. You know, this is Chris Smalling's ninth season at Manchester United. He's made over 300 appearances. I think this is Phil Jones's seventh or eighth season. I think that was bad business for Manchester United, of course, you know, giving, you know, Phil Jones and Chris Smalling, you know, long-term uh, contracts um, as well. So, for me, they're not good enough to represent uh, Manchester United. So, they should be um, on their way out um, in the summer um, as well. Ashley Young, we've got to get rid of him um, in the summer, Ashley Young. I know he didn't start the game yesterday, but, uh, yesterday, but um, he did come on for me Ashley Young's been a good servant to the club you know he was a good winner back in the day you know was Ashley Young you know to be quite honest with you. but obviously now he's 33 years of age again bad business from the club you know giving him, giving him that uh, new uh, one year um, extension as well but for me he gets exploited far too easily he's too easily predictable um, on that right hand side um, as well so I think he should be uh, leaving uh, Manchester United um, in the summer as well and we do potentially need someone young and ambitious um, on that right hand side I don't know what's going on with David De Gea um, at the moment again you know I think he you know made a mistake uh, yesterday I, I don't know if it's something to do with a contract issue he's still potentially you know the best goalkeeper um, in the world um, is David De Gea as we all know this is 8th season now at Manchester United as we all know um, is David De Gea he has made um, over 300 odd appearances uh, for the club we do know Real Madrid have been long admirers of him we also do know recent reports came out the other week saying that PSG were interested um, in David De Gea uh, but potentially reports did say he was demanding wages of around £350,000 a week reportedly Manchester United were not willing to uh, meet um, his wage demands so this is why we have not yet come to an agreement you know to get David De Gea a, a new contract term at the club uh, but potentially yeah I don't know what's going on it's something to do with the contract issue because he's been way below par in the last two to three games but potentially I still think he's happy at Manchester United he wants to commit his uh, long term uh, future with the club but we have not yet you know come to an agreement you know to uh, get him um, a new contract term as well 
Um, I also think Marcus Rojo's definitely um, on his uh, way out um, of the club um, in the summer um, as well because he's enjoyed a very, very difficult time at Manchester United. You know, the amount of injuries he's suffered, the amount of injuries he's suffered and, uh, you know, it's totally affected his uh, playing career um, at Manchester United, you know, to be quite honest with you. So, I think he's going to be potentially um, on his uh, way out um, in the summer um, as well. I think probably Damien's going to be um, on his uh, way out um, of the club um, in the summer, you know, Matty or Damien. Uh, potentially, I think he's enjoyed a very, very difficult time. He was a Manchester United player. Hasn't really been given the opportunity, you know, to be quite honest with you. So, I think potentially he could be um, on his own way out um, in the summer um, as well. I think if he is to leave, he'll probably, you know, make a return back to Italy. Um, I also think potentially, you know, that, um, yeah, Sanchez probably definitely um, on his own way out of the club um, in the summer um, as well. Sanchez didn't actually uh, play uh, yesterday. There were reports saying that he could have been um, involved uh, yesterday. But for me, Sanchez has been very, very um, inconsistent as a Manchester United player. You know, he has sustained, you know, quite a few injuries. He just recovered uh, from an injury and that's not good, you know, for the player. You know, that's the highest player player in the Premier League, the highest uh, played uh, player um, at the club um, as well. So for me, he's potentially no longer playing to the highest level anymore. You know, he has lost that yard um, of pace um, as well. So I think he possibly could be on his way out in the summer. It's going to be hard to find a buy for him, you know, considering his substantial uh, wages it, wages is, um, is on him as well. So it's going to be difficult, you know, to find um, a buy there for Alexis Sanchez as well. Um, yeah, Matt, one matter could be uh, possibly um, on his uh, way out um, as well. You know, one matter. Uh, one matter, of course, um, has been a good servant to the club. You know, some people say that he doesn't now, you know, obviously, you know, fit um, under um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's system. This is one matter's fifth season at Manchester United. And overall, he has got a great pedigree in the Premier League um, as one matter, as we all know, but he's not playing to the highest level anymore. He is aging up. He is age 30. He has lost that yard of pace, um, as we all know as well. I think Man United have been in the process of trying to get him a new contract. I don't think it will be a long-term contract. If we get him a new contract, I think it will be a new one-year uh, deal um, or something um, like that um, as well. But he has been a great servant to the club. I think he's made over 200 appearances uh, for Manchester United um, in all competitions um, as well. So, um, yeah, so there's going to be a lot of players, you know, leaving Manchester United this summer. Uh, obviously, we do know that Valencia of, um, as I forgot to mention, um, he's on his uh, way out um, as well. So that's one player that's guaranteed to leave uh, this summer because obviously he served 10 years um, as a Manchester United player. Obviously, you know, the club opted against the decision, decision you know, to give him that uh, new uh, one year um, extension um, as well. Uh, so he, the report saying that he could um, go to the MLS uh, this summer, you know, when his contract term um, expires. Uh, Ander Herrera um, as well, I think he could be in contention, you know, uh, to be involved um, against Manchester City because uh, obviously now he's returned to training. Ander Herrera, I think, he has uh, recovered uh, from his hamstring injury. Um, he's recently um, had um, as well and it's totally different in that midfield you know when Herrera's there you know to be quite honest because I think you know he brings that fluid in there I think he's been fit, I think he fits in that midfield trio very very well you know to be quite honest with you and we do know there's been a lot of reports going on you know linking him with a move to PSG um, obviously he hasn't played most recently you know with injury and all that but there has been a lot of rumours you know linking him with a move to PSG he did say reportedly he had agreed a deal with PSG I think it's a three year deal worth around £150,000 a week reportedly he did reportedly say that Ander Herrera was demanding like two hundred thousand pounds a week from Manchester United if he was uh, to sign um, a new contract uh, with the club but reportedly Man United were not willing to uh, meet um, his wage demands um, as well so if Herrera does leave in the summer obviously you know we're emphasising a couple of you know uh, targets you know that could possibly uh, replace him um, in that midfield um, as well so potentially I do think you know we need um, a couple um, of additions um, in that midfield but Herrera's been a good servant to the club you know this is his fifth season now um, at Manchester United um, as we all know I think he's made about 187 appearances for the club I think we'll pay just under 30 million pounds to him from Atletico Bilbao uh, back in uh, 2014 um, as well but um yeah, really, really good player, um, indeed. But we do know these better midfielders um, out there uh, than Ander Herrera um, as well. Uh, from the Manchester City game, Bay, you know, could be um, involved um, as well. You know, Eric Bay, because Eric Bay this season, you know, has found game time very, very difficult um, at Manchester United because Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, has preferred the likes of Smalling and Jones um, ahead of um, Eric Bay, um, as we all know. Um, obviously, it did confirm prior to the um, Everton game. It did confirm prior to the Everton game that Bay, you know, would be, you know, would be training, you know, sometime that weekend, as it did say, because recently, you know, he's been. Um, out with a head injury um, as Eric Bay so reportedly he could be involved um, against uh, Manchester City as well I haven't really heard any news um, about Valencia at the moment because Valencia um, of course um, has been um, out uh, with a calf injury as well so for me from my own preference you know it's a big big game uh, this Wednesday um, against Manchester City for me I would give the youngsters um, a chance you know to be quite honest with you because these lot you know just don't seem to give a shit you know to be quite honest with you um, at the moment you know you know, there's a number of players that have got to really really step up to the plate you know to be quite honest with you and I don't know what's going on you know they're not playing for the shirt you know they're not playing for the club, you know, and what's going on? You know, yesterday we didn't even, I didn't even think we had one shot on target, didn't create any chances, too slow on the ball, too tepid, and Everton, you know, just absolutely ran right um, against us uh, yesterday, you know, to be quite honest. And possibly, maybe, I'll take a thing back and say, possibly top four um, is still on, you know, to be quite honest with you, but I can't see us, you know, getting top four, you know, now to be quite honest with you. But it was good that um, Arsenal, you know, did slip up, you know, to be.
be quite honest with you. But looking at it now, uh, obviously Liverpool winning uh, against uh, Cardiff, didn't, uh, was it 2-0 uh, yesterday um, as well. Uh, but looking at it now, I, if I had to choose out of City or, or Liverpool you know, to win the league, I would choose Manchester City because obviously now Manchester City cannot win the quadruple and they can't beat my club's uh, greatest achievement You know, back in 1999, of course, when Manchester United won the treble. Manchester City could possibly win the treble, as you all know, because obviously they've already won the Capital One Cup. They're still in the title race. Uh, and they're still in the title race and of course um, they're in uh, the FA Cup uh, final um, as well so they're in the FA Cup final they've won the Capital One Cup and they're uh, in uh, the title race um, as well so Liverpool are top at the moment by two points but if City win every game from now to the end of the season of course uh, Manchester City um, are champions um, as well but if you look at the running obviously you know you've got to favour uh, Liverpool uh, to win it of course because obviously Liverpool um, I, I think they should win every game from now to the end of the season but City did beat Tottenham 1-0 uh, but obviously their hardest game um, is uh, on Wednesday night um, against um, us um, as well so that could be decisive you know on Wednesday night you know where the title uh, does go of course if City win it you could still probably say you know either way to be quite honest with you if we were to win it you know it'd probably then uh, give uh, the title uh, to Liverpool um, as we all know um, as well but City are obviously you know going for the fourth league title obviously Liverpool obviously they really want to get that league title because Liverpool haven't won it you know for nearly three decades of course you know they haven't won it for nearly three decades of course Liverpool obviously as well Liverpool um, are in the semi-finals um, of the Champions League of course so they're having a really really good season but you know they invested well last summer they addressed the deficiencies and you know they've got a pretty decent squad Liverpool you know they addressed it, you know they addressed their defi- deficiencies with the sign of Van Dijk you know they've got the likes of Salah Firmino and Mane who are a great attacking trio in Liverpool's squad I think Henderson's been doing well for them recently I also think uh, Naby Kite has been doing well for them uh, recently um, as well I think that Andrew Robertson you know he's pretty uh, good uh, for Liverpool um, as well um but yeah, 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 they're doing uh, really, really well uh, this season. But if you had to, if I had to choose, you know, I'd rather uh, Manchester City, you know, uh, win the league. Uh, to be quite honest with you, um, as it does uh, stand uh, now, um, anywhere. But we've got to get top four. I think our, you know, our, definitely our aspirations is top four this season because obviously we're out of Europe. Um, I think for next season, our aspirations, you know, will probably uh, be top four um, as well. Because I did say I think we are at least two to three years off, you know, that um, elite level, um, of course, um, as well. And um, it's essential we've got to get the right signings um, in the summer. And as I did say, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer now has got the job. It's a Three year deal, as I said, and now he's expect as as I said, his expectation levels are going to be in this three years. You know, is to get Manchester United, you know, back up there, you know, competing and challenging and winning trophies, um, of course, um, as well. But I think we are at least a couple of years um, off that um, yet. But it just depends, you know, who Manchester United getting in the summer. Obviously, you know, we've showed um, an interest um, in quite a few uh, young, um, upcoming, uh, talented uh, players um, as well. So. Um, Give you a bit of an update um, on some transfer news that's currently um, going on um, as well. Uh, there has been talks uh, going on um, about Wilfred Zahara uh, more so easily in the media. And uh, from Roy Hodgson's uh, perspective, you know, from Roy Hodgson's perspective, he he, he insists that Wilfred Zahara uh, is um, happy um, at Crystal Palace because uh, recent reports have said that uh, Wilfred Zaha is valued um, uh, valued at around £70, £80 million, pounds, something like that. He can play as a forward. He can also play um, as a winner. He is 26 years of age. Um, he's Wilfred Zaha. Do you think he'd be a good ideal uh, replacement uh, for Romelu? Lukaku, you know, if he was to leave uh, Manchester United uh, this summer. But Wilfred Zaha, as we all know, he, you know, when he was younger, obviously, you know, he did serve um, a couple of years there uh, with Manchester United, uh, did Wilfred Zaha, but I never think, I never, he endured two difficult seasons. I, I don't think he ever broke into the first team with Manchester United, you know, in his two years um, at the club, um, of course, you know, Wilfred Zaha. He initially had to begin his career with Crystal Palace, then he came to United, of course, it was actually um, one of them, um, Alex, it was, uh, no, it was actually um, Alex Ferguson's uh, last signing, you know, before um, he announced um, his retirement um, at the end of the season. Then I think he went uh, to Cardiff uh, City um, on loan, uh, potentially you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, well, you know, Wilfred Zaha um, has actually, you know, played um, under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because obviously Wilfred Zaha was on loan at Cardiff and obviously, you know, then um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, was manager um, of Cardiff um, as well. So, Solskjaer keen on reuniting uh, with Wilfred Zaha. But, and then he basically joined Crystal Palace permanently um, in 2015. You know, he's done really, really well, to be quite honest with you. He has got a contract with Crystal Palace um, until 2023 um, as Wilfred Zaha um, as well. But his performances um, have been really, really good um, indeed. Reports came out the other day about Zaha saying that reportedly he's told Crystal Palace he wants to leave because he wants to play to the highest level he wants to be um, involved um, in Champions League football reportedly uh, from his perspective but I think he's valued at around 70-80 million pounds but allegedly it did say Man United have got a clause um, some kind of clause in his deal which means we do get get like some kind of profit you know that Crystal Palace get from uh, from selling him I think it did mention like 25% or um, something um, like that so basically you know we'd get him uh, for a reasonable figure you know uh, Wilford Zaha you know to be quite honest but he is 26 years of age and he has proven himself you know fantastically well um, at Crystal uh, Palace um, as well 
well. So maybe should Manchester United you know go in for him um, in the summer. Obviously, we're doing all the clubs number one prior to target. Um, is obviously you know Borussia Dortmund, Jadon Sancho. Now we need someone that can go alongside Rashford and Martial um, in our attacking line. And I think Jadon Sancho, you know, would be the right solution. Maybe some people are saying you know we should be sensible uh, with our recruitment this summer. Maybe not spend too much money on one player because as I did say, you know, there's quite a few players um, out there for a reasonable figure. But Jadon Sancho is going to cost the club at least around a hundred million pounds. Um, of course, you know, Jadon Sancho um, has been at Borussia Dortmund a couple of years now. He's proven himself fantastically well. Obviously, he's a former uh, Manchester City player. Um, is Jadon Sancho? I think he did serve um, a couple of years with City, but he never got guaranteed to get in the first team. He never, you know, he never got guaranteed to play in the first team. You know, of course, and he never got into the first team. So this is the main reason why I left Manchester City. Of course, and recent reports have said that Jadon Sancho is interested um, in a return uh, to Manchester. Of course, um, as well, I think he's been in touch uh, with a couple of uh, teammates. But he's proven himself fantastically well. You know, with Borussia Dortmund, he is a bit. I think he's going to cost us around 100 million pounds. As I said, so if words come to an agreement to get him in the summer, it would make him the most expensive English footballer ever. Probably make him um, our most um, expensive uh, signing um, as well. But I think he'd be the right solution for Manchester United because we need someone that can play between the bar lines. You know, put crosses um, into the box um, as well. And Borussia Dortmund know how much of a central player he is to them. Borussia, obviously, um, Borussia Dortmund have been known for doing uh, business uh, with their players because obviously, you know, um, you know, the solar lights of Pulisic, Solder Bamian, and uh, Solder um, Usen uh, Dembele um, as well. And Borussia Dortmund financially would make a huge pro profit on the play, so they would benefit from it because Borussia Dortmund, I think, paid around seven, eight million pounds from, uh, from Manchester City um, as well. So we do know there's been a narrative going on by now, at least for the past six, seven weeks, you know, maybe even longer. But I still think he remains uh, the club's uh, number one uh, priority um, as well, does Jaden Sancho. And um, other players we do know basically know that Manchester United have been interested in um, as well, you know, is uh, Amun Mampasaka. Now, I think he, he's the player, you know, that's got the ability to elevate Manchester United at least in the next two to three years. Again, he's 21, Jadon Sancho's on, uh, only 19 years of age, and look what he's done in Germany. And, you know, Amun Mampasaka's, what, 21 years of age? He's one of um, England's uh, youngest um, upcoming talents, is Amun Mampasaka. Uh, for me, I think he'd be a, a great, I think he'd be an upgrade um, in our right back position, you know, of what we've got uh, with uh, Amun Mampasaka. Um, he's only 21 years of age. I, only, I, I think he only broke into the Crystal Palace uh, first team uh, last year, did uh, Amun Mampasaka, and reportedly he's available for a reasonable figure. I think he's valued at around 35, 40 million pounds, um, something um, like that, um, is Amun Mampasaka, but I think his defensive capabilities are very, very good, and reportedly um, his performances uh, for Crystal Palace um, have been uh, very, very um, good um, indeed, so there has been uh, talks um, about him uh, going on, but we do know basically, we do know Man United um, are interested you know, in getting uh, quite um, a few, a few uh, we're interested in, we, obviously you know, we need um, a central defender uh, to come in um, as well and obviously you know we do need someone you know that can uh, partner um, alongside Victor Lindelof and um, we do know obviously you know there's bit Toby Alderweireld we do know he's a much cheaper alternative you know to the likes of Kula Barley and Raphael Varane um, and all that is Toby Alderweireld he's nowhere near the same calibre or level as Toby Alderweireld and don't get me wrong I've got reservations about Toby Alderweireld now because he is aging up his Toby Alderweireld he's just recently turned 30 not too long ago I think he has lost that yard of pace to be quite honest with you but he is available uh, for a reasonable figure this summer um, is Toby Alderweireld Manchester United were linked to him last summer but obviously you know we couldn't come to an agreement to get him last summer but I think he'd be a great up upgrade um, in our defence you know of already you know what we've got you know to be quite honest with you he's well Premier League proven I think he'd be a great leader um, in our back line uh, with Arda Rehveld um, as well and he's been at Tottenham um, a number of years and I think he's made uh, over 150 appearances uh, for Tottenham um, as well as Arda Rehveld um, obviously you know he's a former Southampton player I think he was initially on loan with Southampton a former Atletico Madrid player a former Ajax player you know where he actually uh, began his uh, youth career um, as well but um, he's available for 20 25 million this summer because that's his release clause because Tottenham last year activated a 12 month extension and included this 25 million release clause because blatantly he has refused uh, to sign the new contract to Zada Weireld recent reports did say that Arsenal um, have also uh, been um, interested um, in him um, as well so I still think he'd probably you know, address um, our defensive deficiencies but obviously you know, a lot of Manchester United fans you know, would like to see you know, Rafael Varane coming but obviously I don't see Real Madrid sanctioning him off this summer unless any team of course um, is willing you know, to trigger um, his release clause I think his release clause um, is around what 400 £29 million pounds in his current deal with Real Madrid but yeah he definitely reads the game very very well he shows that ability you know to play out from the back you know there's Rafael Varane you know he's been at Real Madrid a number of years now I think this is like his 8th season or something now with Real Madrid um, is Rafael Varane's you know he's, about, he's made just under 300 appearances for the club um, in all competitions of course he's won about 15-16 major honours it's quite remarkable you know what he's achieved um, as a 25 year old uh, Rafael Varane um, as well but um, I do really really like him he's good in the air his defensive capabilities are very very good um, indeed uh, he's still got a contract to think with Real Madrid till 2022 as well but I think a few teams have expressed uh, their interest um, in Rafael Varane but reports came out quite a few weeks back saying that reportedly um, 
Uh, Rafael Varane is considering leaving Real Madrid uh, this summer, but he has been at Real Madrid eight years as Rafael Varane, so it's remarkable what he's achieved. He's still got a lot of years ahead of him, and it would be good, you know, for him uh, to experience uh, the Premier League um, as well. I think he's, he's actually a former Lens player. That's where he actually began his uh, youth career, you know, when he was a lot younger. Uh, Rafael Varane um, as well. So yeah, even if, even if he's, you know, even without his release card triggered, without his release card triggered, uh, you know, he's still he's still going to cost them um, around 100 million pounds um, or something um, like that um, as well. But yeah. He'd be a fantastic uh, leader of, um, in our back line, you know, without a shadow of a doubt. We do know Man United, of course, um, have been long admirers um, of Koulibaly, um as well. You know, there's been a lot of talks um, about Koulibaly, um, as we all know. I do really, really like Koulibaly, um, as I said. Um, obviously, it's going to take a world record for, you know, to convince, you know, Napoli to do um, any business, you know, with Koulibaly uh, this summer. Obviously, Manchester United uh, held talks uh, back in January. Obviously, uh, last summer um, as well, you know, we were linked to him. I think we had, like, three bids turned down uh, for Koulibaly back in January. Uh, recent reports did say that Napoli are demanding that they want around £110 million pounds for him. He has been in Italy a number of years now and Napoli, I think, has made um, over £200 odd appearances, uh, for, Na 200 odd appearances uh, for Napoli um, as well. He recently signed a new deal with Napoli, so he has got a contract uh, with Napoli um, until 2023 um, as Koulibaly um, as well. But he's been at Napoli a number of years now and he's 27. He's going on 28. 28. You know, he's still got quite um, a lot of years ahead of him um, as Koulibaly. It would be good for him, you know, to um, experience the Premier League, you know, to be um, quite honest with you. Uh, as I did currently say, reports came out quite a few weeks back saying that allegedly um, he switched agents, you know, to force a way out um, of Napoli um, this summer, and he allegedly said that now his current uh, brother um, is representing him, uh, but potentially I think it's going to take a bid of around £100 million at least, you know, to convince Napoli to sanction him off uh, this summer um, as well, Colour Bali, because obviously the most expensive defender in the world is Van Dijk, who Liverpool paid £75 million for in January of last year, uh, and Liverpool, I think, but yeah, it was £75 million, so if we were to get Colour Bali in the summer, of course it'd make him uh, the most expensive defender um, in world football um, as well, but financially, Napoli had make a huge profit on the player. Napoli only paid about six, seven million pounds in from Jenk back in uh, 2014 um, as well. So Manchester United have been heavily linked with him. So there's been quite a few defenders you know we've been interested in. Obviously you know there's been a lot of talks um, about Bruno Fernandes going on um, as well. Obviously we need a couple of additions in midfield and there has been a lot of talks about Bruno Fernandes and he's a sporting Lisbon player. Reportedly he's teared up um, in Portugal um, as Bruno Fernandes. Um, Bruno Fernandes um, is a former Sampandora and underneath player. So when he was younger he had a lot of experience of playing in Italy. He is now 24 years of age. Um, he's uh, uh, Bruno Fernandes. He is Portuguese, as I said, so he is still very, very young. Uh, reportedly, Man United have been in contact uh, contact with his representatives over a summer transfer, but I think he's got a release causing his sport in Lisbon deal um, of around £90 million, um, something like that, as Bruno Fernandes. Recent reports did say that he was interested um, in uh, making a move uh, to the Premier League um, as well, so Man United have been in talks and inquired about getting Bruno Fernandes on the board. Do you think he'd be the right solution to Manchester United? Do you think he'd be a great addition you know, um, if he was uh, to come in um, as well so there has uh, been talks um, about him going on then um And uh, yeah, so there has been talks about Bruno Fernandes. Um, also been talks um, about Joe uh, Felix um, as well. You know, that Benfica youngster I've been updating you on a regular basis. I think he's a midfielder. He can also play on the win as well. So he is versatile um, as this Joe Felix. Man United have instructed scouts, you know, to keep um, a close eye out um, on Joe uh, Felix um, as well. And Man United scouts have been watching him on a regular basis because his performances have been good. He only broke into the uh, Benfica uh, first team uh, last year, did Joe uh, Felix um, as well. But reportedly, his performances have been very, very good. I think he's got a buyout clause um, of around 100 million pounds something like that um, as Joe uh, Felix um, as well uh, so there has been a lot of talks about him going on and I think you know obviously there was a lot of talks about him um, in January um, as well that quite a few teams um, had expressed their interest in Joe Felix do you and he's Portuguese as well and he's only uh, 19 years of age so do you think you know either Bruno Fernandes or Joe Felix you know would be the right solution for Manchester United perhaps maybe not both but do you think at least one of them you know would be a great addition you know if there was uh, to come to uh, Manchester United um, as well another prime target um, who Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been interested in as well is obviously you know, Declan Rice. He's mainly defensive midfielder, I think, um, is Declan Rice. But for me, Declan Rice, um, he's only 20 years of age. He's one of England's uh, youngest upcoming talents. He got a new contract with West Ham back in December last year until 2024, probably, you know, based on his fantastic performances because he's growing, developing and flourishing fantastically well um, under Manuel Pellegrini's Declan Rice. And he's been in the West Ham senior squad um, a couple of years. Do you think he'd blend in very, very well um, in our midfield if he was to come in? I think West Ham val value, him at, value him at around 40, 50 million pounds um, or something 
for them like that um, as well. I think West Ham would demand that they'd want at least around £50 million, pounds, you know, if they were willing to do um, any business uh, for Declan Rice um, in the summer um, as well. So we've also uh, been uh, linked uh, with him um, as well. So it's good that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is making plans, of course. But as I said, reflecting on yesterday's result, it was a poor, poor performance for Manchester United. Um, as I said, I'm still backing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. You know, I still think he's the right man uh, for Manchester United because you can see the deficiencies in the squad. Obviously, you know, there's still lots to sort out. Um, obviously, you know, what players are going to come in in the summer, what players we're going to recommend to come in, what players are going to be sold. We've got to make a decision as well, you know, who's going to be the captain um, as well, the new captain, of course. And obviously, you know, we've got to get a, a director um, of football, you know, to come in um, as well. Solskjaer wants to win at least five new additions to the club this summer. Reportedly, he's going to get around a £250 million spending spree. Maybe we should be getting a bit more than £250 million, you know, to spend um, in the summer as well. But we've got to get the right players that have got the ability to elevate Manchester United, of course, in the next two to three years um, as well. Because, as I did say, you know, we have been playing catch up for the last five or six years, um, as I said, because and some of this blame you know probably you know stems from Ed Woodward you know to be um, quite honest with you um, as well you know for employing David Moyes you know after you know Alex Ferguson retired it was Ferguson's fault for recommending him in but it was Ed Woodward's fault you know for um, employing uh, David Moyes because obviously David Moyes you know didn't have the stature you know to command Manchester United um, in that position and he only had the short tenure at the club he didn't have that uh, winning mentality um, of course um, as well so it, it was you know it didn't work out under David Moyes and then we had Louis van Gaal you know he totally killed um, our style of play I did Louis van Gaal a lot of money was spent during you know, you know uh, the Louis van Gaal era but obviously you know it didn't uh, work out um, under uh, Louis van Gaal as I said but quite a lot of money was spent under him we did win the FA Cup under van Gaal and then obviously it didn't work out under Jose Mourinho and obviously a lot of money was spent under Jose Mourinho just under £400 million I think was spent under Mourinho on the, on uh, 11 plays you know that uh, Manchester United uh, got um, as well and um, yeah and obviously it didn't work out under Mourinho even though he won two trophies in his first season because he had bad disputes with the board you know he had, he had disputes uh, with some um, of the players um, as well and obviously last summer the board didn't back um, his signings you know that he currently uh, wanted to uh, get um, into the club um, as well but for me you can blame Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in some aspects you know with some of his team selections um, and all that but I think the majority of the blame at this moment in time is definitely um, on the players because they're not playing for the shirt they're not playing for the club and getting embarrassed against Everton you know 4-0 for me you know Everton are not a team that beat uh, Everton are not a team that, that beats teams 4-0 you know very very often but that just emphasises how poor Manchester United um, are um, at the moment um, as well so um, yeah Finns do need to change in the summer we've got to get some signings and I think we need at least five new additions maybe we even need six new additions you know to come to uh, Manchester United uh, this summer um, as well if Paul Pogba goes then Paul Pogba goes but I, I'm still convinced he'll still beat Manchester United next season but you know he's just not he's just not sh he's showing what he's capable of you know in the last five or six games and uh, Rashford for me I've got concerns about him at the moment you know you've got Rashford you know Man United are in talks of getting him a new five-year deal Recent reports did say that I think he's demanding around two hundred. Is it two hundred thousand or three hundred thousand pounds a week from the club if he's if, if he's uh, to sign um, a new uh, five year deal um, as well? But Rashford very very uh, poor um, indeed yesterday. I thought the majority of the team was very very poor yesterday. You know to be quite honest with you, it's one of the worst performances I've seen for a very very long time. You know from Manchester United team, and I can't remember a performance of that bad. You know as I have seen. You know to be um, quite honest with you, but I think Solskjaer's still the right man for United. I think tactically he got it pretty wrong yesterday. But Tommy Ware should have started in that game yesterday. I think. Matt which definitely, you know, should have been dropped. Um, but yeah, and I think maybe we, must, we was uh, missing Luke Shaw. You know, it's good that Luke Shaw is going to be back for the Manchester derby because obviously, you know, Luke Shaw uh, has been suspended, you know, most recently. So, you know, he hasn't uh, been um, in action um, as well. So for me, um, obviously his next two games, City-Chelsea, uh, for me, do you know what I'd do? I'd probably, you know, put quite a few of them youngsters out youngsters out, you know, give them a chance to express themselves, um, of course, and you know, see what they can do um, on that uh, pitch um, as well. Um, but when Ellie Gunnar Solskjaer came in, he did basically say, you know, he was going to give everybody the chance, which he has done, you know, the young players, the fringe players and all that, and, you know, he has done that, you know, to be fair, to be um, quite honest with him as well. But he's going to need backing in the summer, he's Ellie Gunnar Solskjaer, of course, so we, we'll have to uh, see uh, what happens um, as well. But we do know Solskjaer hasn't got a great managerial pedigree, of course, he hasn't really got the experience in terms of management, but as ridiculous as I still think, I believe is the right man who can take uh, Manchester United uh, forward um, as well. So um, anyway guys, drop your comments like on the channel if you do consider subscribing um, as always and take care God bless and I'll see you all again very very soon. Thanks for watching.